In this part of our SharePoint branding series, we're going to talk about applying a custom look and feel to your SharePoint pages. So in the previous sessions, we talked about applying a, a banner here on the top from a SharePointVideos.com website, um, making our site look pretty much uh, from, from a beginning standpoint the same way uh, as SharePointVideos.com. In this session, we're going to talk about applying other elements that are on the page and the look and feel to the page that we're looking at right now. So um, we already have, uh, when, when I switch to the edit mode of the particular page of this page, uh, there is already some content on the page. And the way that uh, this content works is, uh, this is actually a wiki page, wiki style page, where I can type any content anywhere on the page um, and it'll just be saved. So in this case, I can add stuff to the, at the top of the page, to the bottom of the page, as well as to the left panel. So it's really a fluent uh, sort of user experience, not really, not really matching what we have on uh, SharePoint videos. Uh, one, of the one of the more typical approaches is uh, to use uh, web part zones to style your page. So there is already a page, uh, and if I switch to the SharePoint designer and view all of the uh, files on my, uh, on my site, on my SharePoint site, there is already a page that follows the web part zone uh, pattern. Um, in this case, you're looking at the the library, the wiki library that we've looked before. Um, and down below here, there is default.aspx, and that page is different from the one that's currently um, on the home page in the way that the layout here isn't fluent. Um, the page is divided in zones. So if we look at the default.aspx in the browser and go into the edit mode, you see that the pages have uh, particular web parts and you can only add content to those web parts uh, depending what web part that is. So, and that kind of matches our uh, strategy, what we have on SharePointVideos.com, where we have uh, our web parts on the, on the right side, uh, such as newsletter and connect uh, web part, and as well as the main content on the front. So let's go ahead and move uh, the, the look and feel to our SharePoint page in a way that it's right now on, on SharePoint videos. So what happens is that currently this page is the, the home.aspx is a home page. So I'm going to switch the home page to be my default ASPX page and right away you see that the icon switched back so now when I when I click on on the home it actually redirects me from a wiki page to this particular page which is the web part zone page so uh, next thing I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna move over uh, some of the some of the web parts uh, on the that are that you see on the SharePoint videos uh, site to my um, to my custom SharePoint site that I see here. As you can see, there's only two zones uh, already here, and I need to add the bottom zone that represents the footer of my page. So if I switch back to a SharePoint designer and open my default.aspx page, you'll see that uh, some of the sections of that site, uh, and you're looking at the split mode, uh, split uh, view mode, so the code is on the top and then the view is on the bottom, you'll see that some of the sections are not uh, available for editing and then some others are. So right now I'm trying to type in a text right here, right after that div here, and it doesn't let me add any text. So it only gives me this you know, air, uh, content within the zone um, that I can add it. It doesn't let me edit things outside of the zone. So to here the same applies to the right, uh, right web part zone. I can't really add anything beyond that zone. So what I, what I can do though, I can uh, access the advanced editing mode of this particular page and then be able to edit anything on that page. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So you're looking at the protected editing versus advanced editing allowing me to edit anything. So you can see now uh, when I click on the web part zone, um, I can go way beyond and modify any part of the page, which is exactly what I want. This is exactly what I want. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna uh, define that third zone on the bottom that is going to be used for the footer of the, si of the site. And you'll see that in here, this particular layout of the page uses tables, which is a little bit uh, out of date approach, but uh, still pretty common. Uh, it's mostly for SharePoint 2010, it's mostly to uh, be backwards compatible with uh, SharePoint 2007 uh, view. So, uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to add another uh, web part zone here at the bottom that'll span across all of the columns. Um, and that web part zone is going to contain our footer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, an existing definition of the web part zone, copy it, because that's exactly what I want to do, just copy an existing definition. And I'm going to add it to the, uh, uh, I'm going to create a new uh, row here in, the, in our table structure and a new column. 
and I'm gonna add that zone within that column. So here is the column defined. I'm just gonna save it and maybe add some sample text to here so I can see whether that works or not. And uh, save the page again and here's my sample text. The only thing is it only is right right below the the center zone. So I need to span it a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a cold span here to the to the column so it spans across multiple columns. Uh, let's put cold span two to see if that works. Um, and refresh, save the page, and then see. Okay, so it spans, there is already two columns, so we need to actually span across three columns. So let's span across three columns, and then, yep, that's exactly what we need. Uh, when we save the page, we see that that particular section spans across three columns. Now I'm going to insert my web part zone here, uh, which is exactly a replica of the previous web part zone definition. And I'm just going to close some of the open tags here, such as zone. Uh, zone template and as well as the web part page the zone definition and otherwise the definition of the web part zone will not be valid it will just error out so that should that should do it that should define our zone and as you can see the preview shows that the zone is here let's switch to the browser and refresh our page see if it works in our page and nope we're getting an error because we have not renamed our web part zone there is already a zone with a name um, with that name, so we're just going to give it a new name called bottom. There's a bottom uh, bottom web part zone, and a new title, and save it again, and that should do it. So let's switch back to the browser, refresh. Sure enough, the page refreshed, and if we go into edit zone of the web part, we see that there's a bottom zone here with the ability to add the web part. So all of the user interface is already rendered for us by SharePoint. So let's go ahead and move some of the web parts from SharePoint videos or define them as they were on SharePoint videos on our custom site. So I'm going to use the same approach, open the fire bug, same approach we used in the past couple of sessions. I'm going to select uh, the particular element that I'm interested in. In this case, this is the content of this particular newsletter and uh, copy that HTML over to my, um, I'm just going to close this particular web part over to the content editor web part that, that I'm going to add to the right side, uh, the right part of the zone. So I'm going to add the content editor web part to the right zone of the of our site and I'm just going to call it a newsletter as a web part title. So that will hold my newsletter content. I'm just going to rename this web part title to newsletter and click OK and now edit the content of the web part. And since I have actual HTML, I'm going to switch to the HTML editing mode here, rather than just typing a, you know, the text as is. I'm going to click OK, and here is our here's our first markup, exactly as on SharePointVideos.com website. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add another uh, another web part. Again, it's a content editor web part. And in this case, it's going to hold the contact us section of the web of the site. So this particular. Um, connect with us section. So I'm going to pick uh, pick this particular structure. In this case, it's a table. It's a table where each row is a different types of, type of a link, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or blog. So I'm just going to copy the whole content as is and uh, rename this particular or add this particular uh, uh, markup to my web part zone. The only thing I'm going to remove the top uh, here, which is the wrap it inside the table and remove the top link because that's just the title of the web part which I'm gonna change later. So I'm gonna remove this part but leave all of the other contact links. I'm gonna click OK and let's see. Sure enough everything's rendering as almost as is on a website. So I'm just gonna put the uh, title of this uh, web part to be connect with us just as it is on on a SharePoint uh, videos website. So it matches my look and feel. Click OK. And also, connect with us is, is down below. Uh, so I'm gonna below the newsletter. So I'm gonna switch the zone order to, you know, for the newsletter to be on the top and for connect with us to be on the bottom. And I click OK. And then from from for the center zone, I'm gonna remove this calendar here. I don't have a calendar for my SharePoint video site, so I'm gonna remove the calendar from here. And again, add the uh, um, content editor web part. And uh, and add the particular text specific to content editor web part on SharePointVideos.com, which in this case uh, it's this title of the web part. I'm just going to copy the title of the web part 
add to the title of my web part in here. And right after, I'm just going to copy the content as well and style that particular content. So now I have I have the title. Let's now change the, the text as well. I'm just going to copy the first paragraph. I don't, no need to copy everything. I'm just going to copy the first part of it. And I'm going to I'm going to add in the HTML of it and insert this text here. The only thing is, as, as you'll see, the, the text needs, needs a bit of a fixing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to wrap it inside uh, a div uh, so I can so I can assign new style to that uh, particular div because you'll see the text looks a little bit different than, than, than the text in the SharePoint videos. So I'm going to give uh, this div an ID so I can get a hold of it. Click OK and um, and I'm just gonna save the page. And now I'm gonna connect to the uh, the style sheet or, or access the style sheet within SharePoint Designer, the style sheet that I've connected earlier in, in previous examples um, inside my style library. And I'm gonna just add styles to that style sheet. And those styles are gonna be applied because all of the styles here are applied on the master page level. So I'm gonna access this particular div that I've uh, that I've defined earlier in this content editor web part, and I'm going to give it the styles that are that are on SharePointVideos.com website um, for that particular section of the of the site, and those are just font definitions, some margins, and, and things of that sort. So uh, I'm just going to copy them as is. In your case, you might want to adjust some things if you want to. If not, uh, you can copy them from uh, you know either the sliced. Uh, HTML provided to you by the design team or somewhere where you've seen online where you want your particular site to look exactly like. So I'm going to just um, clean it up and leave everything else exactly as is. And if I refresh my site, um, I should see all of the changes applied. Keep in mind, you have to do a hard refresh, control F5. In my case, nothing has been applied. And I think that's because there is a, I'm just going to open the fire bug. And sure enough, it's, uh, there's a P tag or paragraph tag underneath my, my div, so I need to add that in my CSS as well. Uh, so I'm going to add P here, and that should ensure that my styles are applied properly. So that's, again, keep in mind, uh, control F5, hard refresh. So pretty much uh, we've uh, what we've done in this particular video, we've, uh, we've kind of seen what's involved in, in us transferring the markup that's on the page and the content that's on the page to our SharePoint site, including uh, the content within web parts, the content, uh, and then basically the style of that content. So the next, uh, in the next session, we're going to take a look at how we can move um, or how can we can style uh, the web parts, um, the actual content in the web parts and the web parts themselves, such as web part titles, to make um, our, our sites uh, a little more compelling and looking exactly as it is on, uh, on SharePoint videos.